Wretched Radio begins in 3, 2, 1. Getting the gospel out there in one way, shape, or form, and not the dopey prosperity gospel, which leads us to, and you can thank David for this, I have, my wife told me I can't yell for a while. Hey, David, David, David. See, the problem with me not yelling is he can't hear anything. David? Yo, David! David! Yes, sir. I only did that, sweetheart, because I had to, and I'm not calling you sweetheart. David, could you perhaps tell me why you blessed us with T.D. Jakeisms? Oh, you wanted me to do that. I did not. Yes, you did. After the Elephant Room conference, you said, hey, we should do clips to see if Jakes has changed his mind on um, Word of Faith doctrine. That was your idea. Is that right? When somebody messes with your mind, they have messed with your most precious resource. When they mess up your head, they have messed up something serious. Because out of your head comes your thoughts. And out of your thoughts comes your family, your companies, your self-perception, your creativity. And so every now and then, you need to come to church so you can get your head together. I have to admit, I don't know what any of that meant. The Lord said, go back and look at David encouraging himself and weigh it against BP. I said, Lord, what does British Petroleum have to do with David? I can't even imagine. (laughs) Hey, by the way, Joey. The other day, I went into BP, and I got myself a cup of coffee, and the girl who was working there spilled it. Why am I not surprised? hi yo It's a BP spill joke. All right, what did you discover about the biggest project? Uh, what it says right now is we're at 19,416, 19, so we're about 584 short. Way to go, way to go, way to go. Well done. Well, now let us find out how David encouraged himself with an oil spill or something. Encouraging himself. (laughs) He says, the problem that BP has down in the Gulf is when you take something Mm -hmm. that is meant to be energy and waste it, Uh what did give jobs and give life and did give opportunities now creates death. Uh because it is power not channeled into purpose. It wouldn't be a problem if you could channel it. But anytime you got something that's just spewing and not channeled toward anything that's productive, that that should have given life starts to give death because it is not channeled into purpose. Now, what does that have to do with us, TD? He said... When I encourage you, I am going to encourage you to move. And I don't want you to keep telling me to encourage you to do something that you ain't going to do. Because if you do, then the oil is just spewing. And what should have given you life starts producing death because you don't have the guts to take action on the level of anointing that I you know have. it. I know that some I I'm sorry to sound like Rush. I know that somehow this is gonna get to the anointing. See the oil spill and the anointing, and I didn't want to jump in because I hate being right in instances like this. I have to confess to you, if it weren't for his cadence, I don't think I'd know and I don't think the audience would know when they were supposed to get whipped up because that makes no sense to me whatsoever. This is Wretched Radio. This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Do you have the mindset to be blessed? You have to decide to be blessed. I do? You have to decide. You know what? This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Getting whiplash. I will rejoice. I 
as an act of my will, I've decided I'm going to rejoice. I made up my mind. I'm going to be happy. I made up my mind. I'm going to enjoy. I'm as healthy as I'm going to be. I'm as young as I'm ever going to be. I can't get any younger. I can't roll the clock back. What, with what I got left, I'm going to maximize this. I will rejoice. Not going to show off here. <laughs> There's a... There's a Greek word that describes that type of preaching. Piffle. This is Wretched Radio. That's just, that's just a waste of an opportunity. That just makes me sad as much as anything. It's poor people. Just, giving them that, they walk out the door and that's what they're left with? Setting your mind to it? This is, that's the power of positive thinking is what you're hearing woven into a T.D. Jake sermon. Just think it, believe it, and you'll act like it, and God will do it, because who knows what. It, kind of a hybrid. It's a little word faithy. It's a little do this, you'll get that. Speak this, then that'll happen. Act like this. Give this much, you'll get back. Same old, same old, just in a T.D. Jake style package. And it's tragic, is what it is. Simply tragic. would like to share with you, uh, somebody sent this in with a quote from... Ooh, Martin Lloyd-Jones. Now, he's nothing to piffle with. He's a good theologian. That's right. He's nothing to piffle with. I think I confused that with trifle. But if you look at the etymology of the word piffle and trifle, you'll see. Just go to your strongest, strong, strong concordance, and you'll see. It's number 571. And you'll see that the root word of piffle and trifle, exactly the same. Hey, speaking of using your strongest, strong concordance, that's how far I am in the Greek project. I know you probably don't care, but I'm just telling you. We're showing, trying to show how you can use your, your Greek knowledge, understanding the Greek language, what we're going to be teaching, and it is, it's not Greek to me, showing you how a concordance then is connected to a Greek lexicon, which is just a fancy word for dictionary, so that you can see the Greek word. Now, while that can be very cool, as we will teach on this here little DVD product, which should be available... Really, before the next time the Mayans threaten that the world is coming to an end, that that can almost be more dangerous than edifying. Because just because you can go, uh, okay, there's the root of the word that I just learned from Greek because I know how what syllabification looks like, how well, I know to cut off the prefix and the suffix, and oh, there's the root of the word, and now I can go find the word, and I've got the number, and then you can, if you're not careful, pick the meaning of the word that you like and fall into the semantic range fallacy, which is seeing that the word has a broad variety of potential meanings and picking the one that you like. Or multiple words. You can't do that. There's some rules to picking the right definition for that particular word, just like you do in English. I think one of the words that we talked about in Herman who was trunk. Joey, what is a trunk? Uh, it is something that you put clothes and storage items in that you know mm-hmm. sits in your bedroom let me give let me give you the context and it's got branches there, and leaves on it there let me and it's give between the two con- stop it stop it stop it stop it there once was an there once was a room conference that featured a pachyderm what's what's a what's a trunk joey it is a large appendage in the nasal area on the front of a large There you gray go. Context animal. tells you which one is the what what trunk means. And that's what we need to do when we go about translating the Bible. When we take a look at it and trying to figure out what the word is, context is going to often tell you exactly what word what it should be. Second because trunk is trunk is trunk. It's also the back end of a car where you put stuff in or if you're really a creep, a, you know, a dead body. But the, you've got to know the context, or you've got to know how the author uses the word, or how the testament uses the word, so that you do not fall into the semantic range fail. So it'll teach you all of that stuff with some caveats that you've got to be really, really careful. Because if you're not very careful, you you could you could get gored by that elephant trunk. Word is so powerful. Even evil words are powerful. If somebody stands over you and say you're a fool and you're a failure and you're going to be a tramp just like your mammy, whatever they say to you, those Thanks. words have life. If negative words have life to bring you down, no. positive words have life to pull you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the ugly word faith business. Now, do words bring life? 
Sure they do. Do they bring death in a sense? But they, they don't create life. They don't create death. Basically what the Bible was trying to say is you can either be, hey, Joey, nice job, by the way, on Pastor Bobby. Thank you. That would be, that would be speaking like, hey, Joey, crummy job on Pastor Bobby. That would be speaking that. That would, you know, some things help, some things hurt, but that's not what he's on about, TD Jakes. This is, hey, you gotta be thinking right. You've got to be speaking right, and then things will turn out right. Get my mind ready for this year, because when I get this year, there's going to be blessings, there's going to be miracles, there's going to be opportunities. Oh, yes, there's going to be some struggles, there's going to be some challenges, there's going to be some tests, but even the struggles are an opportunity for me to show off the victory if my mind can handle the change. Yeah, you know, throwing in a little caveat like that doesn't really help much. Martin Lloyd-Jones, we must recognize the different types of persons, and we must learn to discriminate between them. He's talking about formulaic evangelism. There is nothing so pathetic, that's a strong word, or so unscriptural as a mechanical way of testifying to others. There are some Christians who are guilty of that. They witness and testify, but they do it in a thoroughly mechanical way. They never really consider the person with whom they are dealing. They never try to access the person or to discover exactly what his position is. And then he basically goes about to say, this is bad and it's terrible. And I like Martin Lloyd-Jones. And I get part of his point that it is good to be genuinely empathetic, to listen. Hey, where are you at in your walk? To care, to show compassion. Sorry for the cliche, but at the end of the day, they still need the gospel. They they still need to hear it. Now, you can if you want to. You can you can go about weaving it in, and you can. You've really got that. You've got that liberty. But I would also say that just because you deliver it, you you hear you hear us doing it. You know, using the law, giving the gospel, repentance and faith. That might be something that Martin Lloyd Jones might have in his sights when he's talking about formulaic evangelism. And I, and I can understand that, but I will also say this. When you've witnessed to five people, ten people, twenty people, two hundred people, what you start to realize is, yes, hearing the stories is interesting, but it ultimately does not really change the message, and it doesn't ultimately change how we're going to that we have to deliver that you, you got to deliver the major components and so whether they're you know i i come out of hinduism fascinating i come out of mormonism fascinating i grew up in an atheist home very interesting and you can if you've got savvy and you can think on your feet like that and you can weave the law and the gospel and repentance and faith masterfully knock yourself out but just because you delivered in a quote mechanical way doesn't mean it's wrong. Because you know who it's not mechanical to? The person who is hearing it. Just because you have heard yourself deliver it many wet times the same way, or you've heard somebody else deliver it the same time, the person who is hearing it hasn't heard that before. And so it's fresh to them. And so while I get the point of let's be engaged, let's be people who listen. It doesn't mean that we need to that we need to constantly be so engaged in listening because honest. Okay, what would somebody have to say before you changed anything about God's character and nature? Nothing. Oh, what would they have to say? now? You can find something out about somebody that might cause you to be sensitive in an area. For instance, somebody is coming. Somebody is living in a. Uh, they had an abortion. Terrible sin. But I think at the same time, it requires some sensitivity. Homosexuality, it is a sin. It requires, I think, some sensitivity. So it can help you, but are you then going to not say that abortion and homosexuality are a sin? Of course you are, like anything else. So it's ultimately not going to really change the message. So with all due respect to the great theologian, yeah, it's nice to vary it. But I really, really don't think that it's necessary. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't have to get out of trouble. You just have to get your mind out of trouble. If you can get your mind out, you can get your money out. You can get your family out. 
You can get your job out. You can get your career out. You can get your health out. You can get your prosperity out. If you can get your mind out, no devil in hell, no weapon formed against you, no enemy that hates you, no witch that hexes you can stop you from being free. If you can get your mind out, grab yourself by the hand and say, we're coming out of this. Uh, let me, Joy, let me grab you by the hand and say, if the sun has set you free, you would... Wait a second, that's not what he said at all, is you it? You have to grab yourself uh, by the hand. I have to grab myself. I grab my... Hold on one second. Take if you. you can get your mind out, grab yourself by the hand and say, we're coming out of this. Grab yourself by the head or by the hand and say, we're coming out of this. There's Who's only the one of me inside your, your mind yeah. out. Grab yourself by the hand and say, we're coming out of this. We are coming out of this. We are coming out of this. We are coming. We, we are coming. Ah, oh, here I am.